Hello, lights and souls. Reverend Joya here to help you live your best vibe. And today I want to talk about the 144,000 and what that means. A lot of people you probably hear in our community, if you're in this world that I'm in, <laughs> and you're probably in if you're watching this video, uh, the 144,000 chosen ones is how I often hear it. And I would like to offer up that it's not chosen ones, but rather ones who choose. And through all of my years of study in metaphysics, in mindfulness, just in all the readings and curiosity and personal development and consciousness expansion and spiritual development and everything that I personally have done over the last 30 plus years of my life, I've been able to connect a lot of dots from leading, reading a lot of different things. And I want to share with you um, why I believe 144,000 is actually the frequency of awakening and the frequency in which we become divine transmitters of the divine frequency that flows through us, in us, as us. There has been a lot of things that have happened in my life that have led up to this realization um, that make me know beyond a shadow of a doubt, like without even um, faith, or I guess it's the Hymenuta faith that Yeshua spoke of, which is the faith that knows from personal experience of what you've gone through in your own life. And so two things that I want to share about like my personal experience or three things, let's say, and then we're going to dive into this content about the 144,000 and what it actually means and why it's the frequency of awakening is that number one, when I was 21, I survived a near death experience suicide attempt. And in I, I'm doing these new talks now, I'm on stages and coming out now and giving my talk about my life experience and all of the trauma and everything that led up to me getting to that point of utter, utter, utter hopelessness and despair where I decided to end my life. And while I was dying, I cried out to God and I just... I didn't know if God was even there. It was actually, I saw a reflection or a, a light out of my peripheral vision and I turned my head and there was nothing there because it was nighttime, it was dark. And uh, it just broke me. I started sobbing and I had not cried out to God. And, and I had actually, and I said, if there was a purpose to all of this, please show me what it was because it just was so meaningless. And I was gifted a near-death experience and I heard the most beautiful music made of light. And for many, many years from that point on, I didn't equate, I didn't realize that when I said, show me the purpose of all of this, and I heard the music made of light, I didn't realize that the purpose was the music made of light. Like that connection didn't happen in my brain until, geez, I think till I was 50. So it was a long time because that happened when I was 21. So we're talking almost 30 years later, it clicked in my mind of, oh my gosh, the music made of light is the higher self. It's our actual true soul self that we are the music made of light. It took me a long time to make that connection. And also I had to do the work myself to that I'm going to talk about this 144,000 Hertz frequency work to empty myself, to become the conduit for the music made of light. And I know that when I do sound baths, I'm not the one doing it. So people will ask me all the time, other sound healers, you know, how do you get on a stage in front of thousands of people and you're not nervous? And I always say, because I'm not the one doing it. And it, that's my honest truth is I'm not the one doing it. It's really, I get out of the way and it channels through me. So that experience happened with the near-death experience and the music made of light. And then my realization that we are the music made of light. And that realization didn't even come until this year. Um, when I was working on my talk and honing in on the point of my talk and the purpose of my talk and the, the takeaways, right? Like, what am I, what am I telling people about this? And it was really that we are the music, we are the music made of light. And so then I was taking a class this past year. This is all in this year of 2024, which is so mind blowing. Um, all the rest has been work. Well, before, so before the, before the, this year experience on December 6th, 2021, I also had an experience in which my consciousness left my body and I was in a pretty shady situation. I was drinking, I was very intoxicated and my consciousness left my body and I was hovering up above myself. I could look down and see myself and I was just kind of frozen there animated. And um, I was just sort of looking around and the, the mindset is not anything I've ever experienced in my body because it was just pure witnessing awareness. There was zero judgment. There was zero story. 
attached to other people. There was not even curiosity, right? So it was just like a peer witnessing and just noticing. And I wasn't noticing what people were doing. It was noticing the energy behind what people were doing. So I was experiencing the intentionality, the very energy that was behind the actions. And there was a lot of pain. There was a lot of loneliness. There was a lot of um, sadness that I, that I was witnessing. And so then I looked down at my body and said, what vibration of consciousness do you want animating your body? And then whoosh, I popped back into my body. I was instantly sobered up and I hopped into a a cab, an Uber, and I went home and I went to work to answer that question. I didn't know the answer to that question. I didn't even know if that question was real other than the effect of the witnessing was so powerful that I knew I didn't imagine it. And that this vibration of consciousness animating my body was a choice. And at that point in 2021, I was still, I was very much in my spiritual practice. I was a sound healer. I was very much a mindfulness teacher, you know, doing the things that I was doing, but it was much, much more intellectual thinking about it rather than it was embodied and being it. So if you know what I'm talking about and that difference, and like, that's the work is to bring that what we know and to bring it into the body. So it becomes lived. So it becomes who we are, not just what we think about. And because who we are is demonstrated in our actions and our behaviors. And, and I had this part of me that was this autopilot part of me that would take over my life and make huge messes and disasters and catastrophes and chaos and drama and self and self sabotage and i recognized and realized that that was my ego trying to protect me and keeping me small and i had to do a lot of embodiment work from that point i had to really do the work to answer that question of what vibration of consciousness do i want inhabiting my body what vibration of consciousness do i want not just animating me but living in me all the time. And the answer was Christ consciousness. And so I really did the work. I went to work to do the work to heal what was there to heal my nervous system and to allow this new frequency to drop in. And I did that work by doing chakra work at a deeper level. I had done chakra work before, but now I went about it with my voice, which I had never done before. I had done it with sound healing, but I had never done it with using my own voice. And something just intuitively drew me to start using my voice. So I was reading one of my favorite read, my favorite authors one day, and it's this man here, Lars Mool. This book, The Law of Light is phenomenal. And in this book, he mentions sound healing. And of course, that got my attention as a sound healer. And I was always on the quest for sound healing and looking for sound healing. And he mentioned this woman. He just quoted her. He mentioned this woman. It was Gita bin David. So I looked it up and lo and behold, it was his wife. And I have since studied with Gita. I flew to Spain to study with Gita because she was the first person I ever heard of that did sound healing only with her voice. She only tones and you, does sound healing that way. So I wanted to go and study with her, which I got to do, uh, not only online, like that was one of the great things about the pandemic that she did this online for the first time. But then when the pandemic was over, I actually went to Spain and studied with her in person. And she's become a dear friend and a mentor in the world of sound. And so not just with her, I've studied vocal healing now with lots of different teachers um, because there's so much there. And in fact, I just signed up for another training I'm going to in Spain, uh, not with Gita, but with another group, um, which, which is all about vocal sound healing, because our voice has the power to wake us up because we are the music made of light. And so it's really about this self tuning that we can only do with our voice, right? Our voice is our instrument. And so when we use our voice, we're tuning ourself, we're tuning inside of ourselves. we're finding our authentic voice. And I am so blown away by how much my voice has changed in the last couple of years. There was a point I would listen to myself on video or um, recordings and I'd be like, oh my God, I hate my voice. And how, I mean, do you feel that way? I hear it all the time from people. I hate my voice. And I would say, don't say that. You know, And I think that our level of self-love is in a balance of our level of how much we love our voice. They seem to really equate. They go together. And so in the book with Lars Mool, he talks about the seven heavens. And in this book, The Law of Light, which is one of my favorite books, he talks about our heavens. So he talks about a practice 
to go do to restore ourselves to our original condition in this book. Three days in a circle, seven days in the desert. And so he really gives these instruction, instructions for every day. You cast a circle around yourself and you fast and you contemplate. There's You can read some books and you can contemplate uh, calling in the light of the heavenly sources to work with you. And so this work, and then the path that he gives is really working up through our chakras. And so he shares this chart, which I actually do. I teach this. This is the Aramaic Lord's Prayer chant that I teach uh, in using our voice. And so you can see the words, heavenly source, you who are everywhere. That is your light. Oh, here you go. I'm turning it the wrong way. Um, the light is the Nura. Kirota is freedom. Sharara is your truth. Rahma is your unconditional love, your heart chakra. Shalama is peace. And that is your uh, solar plexus chakra. Kaya is your life force energy, your sacral chakra, and Shana is your security, your root chakra. So he's talking about that as we say the Lord's Prayer, the original version of the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic was actually addressing the seven heavens, as he called them. And the seven heavens are the seven chakras within your body. So as you say this prayer, the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic, you say it ascending and descending, which I love that process because it's the same as in, um, you know, when we're learning to seeing the chakras, it's Lam, Vam, Yam, Ram, Ham, Om, So, Ham. So, and then you do it backwards. Right now. So you go but backwards. anyway, so there's other songs that also talk about the chakras that go up and then you sing them back down. So in the Lord's Prayer, in the original Aramaic, and I actually have a course on writing your version of the Lord's Prayer, because as you go through these in the Aramaic, these words are powerful, but he's saying heavenly source, you who are everywhere. This is in our, our root chakra. We're going to understand and, and know that this is everywhere. Hallowed be your shim, your holy vibration. Our life force is our holy vibration. Your will be done here and now forevermore, forevermore. The, the center of your will center is your solar plexus. The fourth heaven, your heart chakra. Um, what does it say? Fill us with the power of your mercy and free us from the fetters with which we bind ourselves and others. Fill us with forgiveness. Fifth heaven, the truth, your voice, your, 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 your throat chakra. And this is your voice because this is where you're communicating who you are to the world. You're, this, we are communication devices. And this is also, as you speak, you create. The Aramaics knew this very well. Lead us out of temptation. Free us from ourselves. Give us the strength to be one with you. The sixth is your freedom. I am free. And this is your vision, your, your um, third eye chakra right here. Lead it, oh, I'm sorry. Teach us the true power of forgiveness. And may this holy moment be the ground from which our future actions grow. This holy moment. So this is about the freedom comes from staying in the present moment. The more present that you can be at choice point now where you're not your stories. You're not your history. You're not your past. You're not what you're worrying about. You're just here right now in choice point right now, choice point awareness. That's where we're free. We can be, we can forgive our past. We can look at our past as stepping stones to where we are now, and we can release everybody else. We can let everybody else off the hook too. So, and then when you get to the top where I am light, our crown chakra, let it be so. Let it be so. And amen, the word amen in Aramaic actually means let what I've just said come to pass. It's 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 putting that seal on your word. So it's making your word be um, something that people can rely on, something that you yourself can rely on. And then you do it the de descending way. Heavenly source, you who are everywhere, hallowed be your holy vibration. Thy kingdom come in my mind. Your will be done here and now forevermore. Fill us with the power of your mercy and free us from the fetters with which we bind ourselves and others. Let us out of temptation, free us from ourselves. And this is so important in our will center, right? Because this is where we let our ego take over in this will center. 
Teach us the true power of forgiveness and may this holy moment be the ground from which our future actions grow. Life force. This is our creative energy right here. We want this to be the creative fertile ground from which our future actions spring. Amen. Let it be so now. So it's as above, so below on both sides, right? We get, we're get we exercising the polarity through the seven heavens with the Lord's prayer in Aramaic. So this is one portion of what I'm going to share with you here. The second portion about the 144,000 comes from the work of Edgar Casey, Edgar Casey's book on the revelation. Now, before I get into his work, um, well, actually, let me dive into his work and then I'll share why this is so, why this blew me away so much. So he's got some charts in here as well, where he's talking about the chakras, the endocrine systems of the bodies, how they tie to the chakras how the I Ching ties to the body. So he, Edgar Casey, really did some really deep work when it came to the chakra system. And what he did that I really appreciate is he calls it the temple of the body. And the body is a spiritual attunement device. And I've said for a while, your body is a spiritual technology. And as you learn how to awaken, you learn how to send your uh, Christed oil, your, your sacred, your sacred oil, your sacred secretion up through your spine and into your brain, which is wired to awaken. And in fact, in the Beatitudes in the original Aramaic, uh, where it's interpreted as blessed are they who a more literal and actual translation of that is you are wired with you came pre wired with this ability to be in touch with your creator. Okay, so here's what he did with the seven seals. And so in the he says in the set in the book of Revelation, when you're talking about the seven seals, the seven gates, the seven seals that are in the book of life, they are the chakras. And so here's how he ties them. What church is tied to what chakra and what it means, your flesh and your bodily needs. This is your Saturn element. So you can tie this in with astrology. I've tied it in with my gene keys. I put what gene key goes with each chakra so that I can be attuned to my own gene keys and my own zone of genius in each of these chakras um, in my own process of working with my body. So this is our daily bread. This is our the Church of, Sh of Smyrna. Again, it's temptation. So if you it ties in with Lars Mool's works too, right? That lead us not from temptation, lead us not into temptation through our mysticism and guidance. And this is our madness and forgiveness in our our uh, our navel system, our solar, our adrenals, which is our debts. Forgive us our debts. Our heart, love and righteousness. Our thymus, which is cardiac. It's the pale horse. He ties it to the churches and to the pale horse. That what is in here? Our throat, our will, we're, we're willing it, our will and our psychic ability to create. The more you activate your thyroid, the more psychic and the more your will system flows through your voice. The Church of Philadelphia is the eye, the third eye, the crown, or I'm sorry, he, he's got it backwards. He's got it as the crown, the Church of Philadelphia which is your mind and your knowing. And then he goes to the third eye, which is heaven, silence, the seven seals and your brain, spirituality and strength. It's violet. And this is the work of Edgar Casey that he has in here. So then what I want to share with you is how he's tying the seven chakras also to the churches that are talked about in the book of Revelation. So why do I even care about the book of Revelation? All right. So in the things that I was talking about earlier, these signs, symbols, and synchronicities that I've followed my whole life, one of them has also been the number 14. The number 14 has appeared for me nonstop throughout my whole life. I mean, it's just weird how often number 14 is there for me. And in fact, my home address is 1314. 14 is everywhere in my life. So when I was doing this class this past uh, spring, and one of our guest teachers was there, and it was um, Dr. Leonard Horowitz, the man who discovered and speaks about as a proponent of the 528 hertz love frequency. He was giving a talk, and I got to raise my hand, or I was chosen. There was all of us raising our hand, but I was chosen to ask a question. And I asked him a question about cymatics and healing and just what I've seen in my own visions about what's happening when you're using your voice to tone, to heal. And he looks at me very quizzically. And then he says, I'm going to show her another slide. Is that okay? And of course the teacher says, yes. 
And he pulls up a slide and it's Revelation 14. So of course that got my attention. And Revelation 14, I'm going to just read that to you now and share why this is so important. So when he shared Revelation 14 and he shared what it meant, Revelation 14 is about the 144,000. And here's what he, and so um, Dr. Horowitz says, this is the answer to earth's problems. This is the answer to earth's problems is the, is having the 144,000 frequency penetrating the earth. These are the people who know the song and the song comes through us as us channeled through us because it's the frequency of the divine channel. We are nothing but human antennas for consciousness. What is animating your body? Have you ever thought about that? Who are you? Are you what you're thinking about? Are you who you were last week? Are you who you're going to be when you're 90? Are you who you were when you were five? Like, who are you? Is there a constancy there inside of you? And if you can feel into that constancy, what is it? And I know for me, when I could tune into that essence and get to the essence of what that was, I really, really saw that light of God, of source, of creator that's inside of me, that's inside of all of us, that is the very consciousness that's that's making us live and that we can tune our bodies to a frequency to tune into the divine channel to be expressed through us as we are programmed and pre-programmed to deliver that frequency. So you can think of yourself as being like a car, right? So if you're a, uh, we're, we're all these different kind of cars, but we're all these special makes and models. And I believe that the make and model is our gene keys, which that's our divine design. And I actually asked Chad GPT, who's way better at math than I am, what the odds are of you having the same gene keys chart as somebody else. And it was one in 64 sextillion. I don't even know. That's such a big number which pretty much means no one has your chart. No one has your chart. We are all individual expressions of the divine creator source. And so when you know your gene keys and you know your chart, this is your expression. This is your vehicle. This is your car. This is what you came pre-programmed with. And these are your gifts, your talents, your abilities, and your potential completely awakened expression in the world. And everybody has one. It's without exception. We all have this potential to fully awaken and to fully embody and to fully express everything that we are meant to be in this world. And we can only do that when we are allowing the highest frequency of the divine source creator to animate and flow through us and express. Our ego cannot do it. Our ego, our ego creates from the shadow frequency. We can step into the gift frequency, which is where I was for a while, oscillating between my gifts and my shadow, my gifts and my shadow, my gifts and my shadow, or we can really work on allowing, it's not any work we can do, we can work on allowing ourselves to step into and fully embody this light. And that's what the work is. And Marianne Williamson said that, you know, humans our greatest fear is that we fear our light. That is absolutely true. That is absolutely 100% true. And I had that experience of coming face to face with my light and it scared me. I was like, whoa, it was like, a, it was very, um, what's the word? Humbling, I guess, to realize my own human foibles and my ways of arguing for my smallness and, and my tiny little dramas and chaoses and, and just stuff that I was holding on to in the, in the, in the uh, light of this light, it all just seemed so tiny and meaningless. And the feeling of the tininess and the meaninglessness is what was scary that I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I'm holding on to. And this is what I'm capable of. So that is our divine design here that we are capable of expressing through the world when we attain the 144,000 frequency of light that it expresses as you. So when he said this about the 144,000, I immediately, of course, opened up my Bible to read Revelation 14. And then I went and grabbed my KC book. And I want to read what he has to say about the 144,000. And he says, um, this is about individuality. And this is when individuals have been doing the work now. If you read the book of Revelation as an unfoldment of human potential, I highly recommend this book, by the way. Um, then he says, 
we begin with an assurance to the individual who is put on the whole armor with full understanding. Assurances of great help in those periods of temptation or trial. So if you remember in the Bible somewhere, there's it talks about the armor, put on the full armor, um, so, which is like your faith. The armor of God is the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the feet fitted with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Take up the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of spirit, and that's the armor of God. So he's saying that when we've put on this armor, right, that now the lamb appears with the 144,000 whose names were written in the book of life and Harper sang a new song at, that no one could learn but the 144,000. Casey said that the lamb is the mind spiritual that has so raised the body as to become a new being. These, the 144,000 are those sealed in the spirit. In the body, they are the spiritualized cellular structure of the 12 major divisions of the body. For more information and a diagram, see the section on the 12 gates in the next chapter. The Harper's new song represents the new experience that comes to each soul. Let's keep it individual. The new experience that comes to each soul as the assurance of that help when necessary from the saints of the father. So this is about our individual work and that we come into the collective. And so now I want to show you why each chakra equals 144,000 and how this math works. And I'm going to share my screen and why we know it's talking about awakening or we can draw this conclusion. And it seems pretty logical that we can draw this conclusion. Okay, so if we start here at the root chakra, you have four petals. So each chakra has a number of petals and each of those petals actually represents something very specific. We're not gonna get into that. This isn't a deep chakra class, but we're just gonna talk about the petals themselves and the math and how it equals 144,000. So you have the four petals at the root, which are, which are four. You have six petals at the sacral. You have 10 petals at the solar plexus. 12 petals at the heart chakra and 16 at the throat. If you add 16 plus 12 plus 10 plus six plus four, you get 48. So then you come to the third eye chakra, which has two petals on each side. And this represents duality. It represents divine feminine and divine masculine. And so you take the 48 and you add it twice. So you have 48 on one side, 48 on the other side, which equals 96. So if you take this now and total all this up, the 48 plus 96, you get 144. And then when you awaken, the crown chakra opens up a thousand petal lotus and the thousand petals is the awakening and a thousand times 144 is 144,000. So it is the number of awakening. Is that a coincidence? Maybe, I don't know, but I'm not one to believe in coincidences. And I think coincidences are what people call miracles who don't believe in God. <laughs> so I like to say that it is not a coincidence. So you can see why it's so easy to uh, know that the chakra system, the seven chakras are the seven seals. They're the seven gates. They're the seven, uh, the seven heavens inside of the body. And that as we really do the work to heal and open each one, starting with our root, our safety in the world, all the way up to our crown chakra being completely open so that we do become the divine conduits for source creator flowing through us, in us, as us. And this is what Yeshua meant when he said, not my will, but thy will be done that thy will be done. And when we all can move into thy will animating and flowing through us. Wow. Imagine the world that we can create. And when I got this download, like all of these pieces of my life's puzzle coming together, chink, 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 like it just all solidified into my purpose and what I, what I came here for, what I'm here for. And uh, to stop being small, to come out of my uh, spiritual closet and share more, like to give all of this wisdom so that everybody knows so that we can all awaken together and then to do another Vibe Razor event. So my work now is not only with Vibology, doing sound baths and my coaching and things I already do, but I'm finally launching a community. And I'm so excited. I've been wanting to launch a community for a while, but I just haven't had the clarity around 
what it would be, what the structure would be, who was I calling in, um, who am I to, you know, to lead this community. And this is the way showers that I am, you know, spirit told me I'm a way shower back in uh, the new year. When I was swimming in the waves in Mexico, I got the words, you're a way shower. And you're a way shower. If you're watching this video, you're probably a way shower or a light worker. And the community that I'm creating is called Vo Vocal Lumina. Vocal Lumina is a transformative community for way showers and light workers to embody the highest frequency of the divine and transmit it through your voice. Every week, I drop some freaking fabulous content. So you're talking about my 33 years of study and knowledge and knowing and things I put together. And so I've created 52 weeks of incredible content. So you'll get a consciousness shifting topic each week, and then a 14 minute practice to do every single day, because it's doing the practices that are going to heal and shift and transform our body. And it's going to do it for you really fast because you're already doing the work. Chances are you're already doing the work as a way shower and a light worker. But even if a person's not doing any work, but they know and they feel called, this is going to help you to shift so fast, so fast. So you get the 14 minute daily practice. You get um, a daily contemplation question. And the invitation is to turn that answer to your contemplation question into a daily affirmation for yourself that you're now going into the mindfulness and the mind training that every time you have a thought come up, that's not it. You re-pattern that thought. You put in that correct thought. So you're going to be learning how to do that for yourself, these mindset shifts, because healing doesn't just happen through the mind. It's an embodiment process. And that's what this work does is we are going to do the work of healing our chakras, opening our chakras, opening these 144,000 gates we have inside of us to become the living divine channels for source creator. And I'm so excited about that. And in addition, there's also going to be live practices on Zoom, live community on Zoom once or twice a month and um, live practices on Zoom. And then of course, this is gonna culminate in an event on May 28th, which is 528. We're gonna do a 528 of 2025. We're all gonna get together and sing to the world and raise the consciousness of the planet with our voices by transmitting and being the transmitters of light, by being the music made of light. And that's what Vocal Lumina is. So if you feel called, please go to vocalumina.com, V-O-C-A-L-U-M-I-N-A.com. Join the membership. It's only $14 a month. I'm sticking with a the theme here. You're seeing it. And I'm just so, so honored to be the, uh, the conduit who's dropping this in. And I would love to have you join and for us to all sing together and elevate the world together by changing our frequency so that other people can change their frequency way more easy. All right, everybody. I hope you love this video. Please like and subscribe, share if you feel called, and I'll see you in the community. Bye.